Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, August 16th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. The Taliban takes over Afghanistan. Joe Biden blames a debacle on Donald Trump. The Durham report finally moves forward. The Delta variant targets younger Americans, Europeans, protest vaccine passports. Also ahead. I spoke with former President Trump about Afghanistan. I will have a special report today on that note. The president of Afghanistan fleeing the country as Taliban fighters entered the capital city of Kabul. The terrorists now control Afghanistan as American forces leave after two decades of combat. There is panic at the airport right now. Secretary of State Antony Blinken defending President Biden's decision to quickly pull out, telling reporters this is not Saigon. I will have a commentary as mentioned on that shortly. Now, Mr. Biden released a statement on Afghanistan, blamed the chaos on Donald Trump. You may remember in July, Mr. Biden himself told the nation Afghanistan would not collapse. Obviously, he was wrong. The Wall Street Journal reporting special counsel John Durham appointed during the Trump administration to investigate corruption in the Russian collusion situation. Well, Durham apparently is presenting evidence to a grand jury that signals there may be a criminal charge or charges in this very, very long investigation. Record number of younger Americans now hospitalized with COVID. The group largely avoided the disease in the early days, but now the Delta variant seems to be targeting them. Health experts say low vaccination rates and the highly contagious strain now impacting the 30-somethings. 70,000 people are currently hospitalized with COVID, 90% of them unvaccinated. Demonstrators in Paris protesting vaccine passports for the fifth straight week. Police now demanding residents display the digital document in most public places. The rules apply to restaurants, theaters, bars, gym, on and on. Similar measures are being planned in the USA, Germany, the UK, Spain, and New York City already has a vaccine mandate. In a moment, the disaster in Afghanistan. Right back with it. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at NRIA.net. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. An exclusive. I just talked with former President Trump about the situation, and I will report back in the body of this commentary. We begin with the fall of Afghanistan shortly after the attack on 9-11 20 years ago. President Bush sent American troops to topple the Taliban, which were protecting al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. The USA and its NATO allies were quickly victorious, but then decided to nation build, that is, try to give the Afghan people a shot at democracy. A big mistake. Afghanistan is primarily a tribal country. Most are poorly educated there and devoted to a primitive form of Islam. The people in Afghanistan have little allegiance to a central government. 
They basically support war lords in their areas. America has spent almost $2 trillion trying to bring freedom to Afghanistan. Now, about 2,500 U.S. service people were killed in trying to do that, many more wounded. About 3,500 private contractors, people from the West working in Afghanistan, were also killed. President Trump, when he took office, declared he wanted to get the USA out of Afghanistan. You'll remember that. And so he began to negotiate a deal with the Taliban to make that happen. The negotiations were held in Qatar, an Arab nation on the Persian Gulf. The negotiations said that the Taliban would not wage war on Americans and would cooperate with a coalition government. The problem was the Afghan government itself that America had protected was not involved in the negotiations. Donald Trump told me if he were president today, the Taliban would not have taken over the country because the deal was they would participate in a coalition government, and if they did not, Mr. Trump said to me, he would punish them personally. That means the Taliban leadership would have been targeted by drones. When President Biden took office last January, he decided to fully withdraw from Afghanistan without any threats to the Taliban leadership. And so, once Biden got established, the Taliban began to assassinate key Afghans and take over the country, which they did with stunning swiftness. Again, the Afghan people are not going to fight for a central government in Kabul, and therefore the country collapsed. Whose fault is it? Well, it's at President Biden's doorstep. There is no question about it. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it. For more honest news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com, where we will have a lot more about this incredible Afghan situation. In a moment, something you might not know. My trusted technology research executive, Jeff Brown, has a must-see video out right now called The Great Reset. This reset has been in the works since 2015. Now the circumstances are just right, and it appears to be coming to fruition. So please pay attention, because in Jeff's briefing, he will show us exactly what's going on, the proof, and how we can best prepare He'll also give us the name of an investment he believes we must own if we hope to have any chance at preserving our hard-earned cash. In fact, if you buy it soon, he's convinced you could be one of the select few Americans who could see their nest egg double just from this one single asset. We may be about to witness the greatest financial shift in the history of America with the Great Reset. So prepare now. Go to jeffbrowntech.com. That's jeffbrowntech.com. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. On this day in 1958, a little baby was born in Detroit to a housewife and automotive engineer. Within decades, she would become the best-selling female musician of all time. Happy 63rd birthday, Madonna. Here's her story from the Motor City to the Material Girl. She was born Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone on August 16th in the middle-class neighborhood of Bay City, Michigan. Her parents were devout Catholics. Imagery associated with that faith later became an important part of Madonna's presentation. In high school... She was a straight-A student, cheerleader, and a disciplined dancer who graduated a semester earlier than her peers. She went on to study dance at the University of Michigan, 
but dropped out after two years to pursue a career in music. The material girl then packed up and drove her used car to New York City. Once there, Madonna paid her rent with a handful of odd jobs, including nude art modeling and waitressing at the Russian Tea Room. Persistence paid off for Madonna. She got a record contract. She released her self-titled debut album in 1983. That record included the hit singles Lucky Star and Holiday. Madonna appeared on Dick Clark's American Bandstand in 1984, famously telling Mr. Clark her ambition was to, quote, rule the world. Madonna released her follow-up album, Like a Virgin, in 1985. It went platinum in less than 15 days. The rest is, as they say, history. In total, Madonna has sold 300 million albums, including 12 number one hits, launched 11 worldwide tours, her net worth, ready, $850 million. And here's something else you might not know. The Material Girl has lost a few fans recently because of her political views. Following the election of Donald Trump, she said, quote, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A facetious remark, but foolish and offensive. Back after this. Thousands of animals are abandoned in the wilderness in America, and they need your help. I partnered up with Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. Founded by actor Leo Grillo, Delta Animal Sanctuary is a -a one-of-a-kind rescue. Trained attendants look after each animal, providing them with food, treats, toys, and affection. Also, Delta Rescue has an on-site animal hospital that operates 365 days a year. And unlike others, Delta Rescue believes in giving animals a right to life. They allow all moms to have their litters, then care for the entire family for life. Delta Rescue relies solely on donations from people like us to help fulfill their mission. Support Delta Rescue and put your legacy to work. Delta's tax-saving estate planning, grow your estate while letting your compassion for animals live on well into the future. Learn more at deltarescue.org forward slash bill, deltarescue.org forward slash bill. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly, no spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.